uh, Higgins and and uh, Kuyong, well, you got to say this, Alan, that in Higgins, Kuyong, and, Ch- and Goldstein, that the sitting members need forty five percent of the primary yes. votes. Josh got forty nine. Katie yes. Allen just under yes. forty nine. Tim Wilson fifty two. If they get below forty five percent primary vote, then there's a great deal of difficulty in holding those seats yes, because they only get just got twenty one point four percent of the non major party preferences. So you don't get many of the preferences. So they need a base of they need a base of forty five percent to hold those seats. I've got to say, quite frankly, if 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 there's no place for Josh Frydenberg in the Australian Parliament, we may as well close the joint down. Yeah, 100% correct. Let's go to Tasmania. Bass and Braddon, strangely, uh, a very good candidate, Liberal candidate in Braddon, seems to be in more trouble than Bridget Arch- Archer in Bass, but they are both being proving very difficult for the coalition. Yeah, well... Um uh, I, I note that Gavin Pearce's family have been in the area of Braddon since the 1850s. Yep. So, for goodness sake, it would be, you know, it'd be yep. un-Australian to throw him out, Alan. I'd have to say that. Uh, and Bridget Archer, because, um, you know, she took a very strong stand in relation to the Integrity Commission, um, it has, has a national profile. I, I would expect the Coalition to hold both of those. If they don't hold both of those, then they're not going to win government. Yes, that's, that's right. In there. South Australia, Boothby seems to be gone, I have to say. Now, in WA is interesting, uh, Swan and Pearce... All sorts of trouble there with retiring members, and strangely enough, has luck with a margin of, uh, in a very significant uh, local figure there, a margin of almost six percent. It's turned marginal. Well, Ken White will win though. It's five point nine. You, you, you're more in trouble in seats like Benelong, as we said, where, you, where the sitting members are retiring, and that's the issue we've got with Steve Irons yeah. and Christian Porter. So, um, you know, Ken's held that seat since 2010. He'll hold that seat. But, you know, Western Australia and Queensland show you and have for years that that, that the population will vote strongly one way in a state and entirely the other way federally. Mm. And we've performed... The New South Wales... The Queensland and Western Australian divisions have performed incredibly well. They've been the backbone of the success of the government for many years and... uh, I think has luck will be held. The other two, difficult. Yeah. And the ACT in the Northern Territory is safe Labor. Just before you go, look, a Senate, uh, half Senate, half of them elected, 76 seats. Um, there's a real concern here. I mean, the Greens already have nine seats in the Senate. Surely when people go into the poll on Saturday, they've got to think very, very seriously about who they give their vote to in the Senate. Well, Alan, um, you know the Senate. The Senate has been a a a, a negative for a, a Australian, you know, governments in in over the years. When when you know, it's better that either the coalition controls it or Labor controls it. Hmm. This complete roulette wheel of politics, where governments have got no idea where any of their legislation is going to be passed or not, is holding Australia back. And the thought that the Greens would increase their numbers yeah, and have a more significant stake is is unthinkable, given the damage these. People would do to Australia. Good on you. All right, Michael, great to talk to you. I think in summing up, Thanks, Scott Ellen. Morrison's got a real problem getting to 76, but there are two days to go. Michael Craver, always great to talk to you. Thank you for your scholarship and your insights. Catch up soon. There Cheers, he is. Alan. Michael Craver, he's forgotten more than most people know about the Liberal Party.